I start by lightly sketching out the composition using a pale grey pencil. I'm using a Luminance pencil here by Caran d'Ache, one of my favourite brands. And I'm just lightly sketching in where the different elements of the composition are going to go, just so I know roughly where I'm going to start drawing. I often start these pieces by filling in the hills and I use the Burnt Sienna 50% pencil um, or something similar, something that's a sort of reddish brown colour and I just fill in very roughly, not the entire hill, I like to leave some of it white underneath so that when I lay it over the top with the dark indigo some of that lovely warmth of the brown colour underneath shows through and in some places the white of the paper will show through so this creates a really nice contrast and also adds a little bit of depth and texture so here I'm starting to layer the dark indigo over the top and you can see that I'll vary the pressure so sometimes I'm drawing really heavily and pushing down hard on the paper and other times I'm just using a very light touch and sometimes I'll go over certain areas more than once. I also try to keep some of the pencil strokes visible so I'm not blending it all in. Um, that also helps to add texture and I add little dots as well and these little dots could be interpreted as being like a path or rocks or vegetation. It's just about adding lots of detail. Here if you look closely you can see the burnt sienna just very slightly showing through in certain places. starting to add some colour on the bushes and trees here and I'm going to be using autumnal shades for this piece so it'll be colours like terracotta, sanguine, russet, I love all of these colours I think they're so vibrant and beautiful luminance and the Faber Castell polychromos pencils for this piece and later on you'll see that I also use a Derwent drawing pencil this is one of the four colors I bought the other month and I've since bought myself the set of them I think I may have mentioned this in another video but um, yeah they're my Christmas present to myself so I haven't opened the tin of 24 yet so I only have four colours to play with at the moment but I'm going to be making a video about those. So one thing I found that's perfect for depicting chimney smoke is the Caran d'Ache Neocolor Pastel 
in white so you'll see how I use this here For some of these landscapes I decide to draw the house in, um, I'll draw the roof in to be specific and then I leave the paper to show through as the white of the house so I'll draw the roof and I'll draw the windows and so on and in others I'll decide to paint the house in. So in this one I'm painting and I'm using Holbein acrylic gouache to do that. This little brush is one of my favourite brushes. It's the Pro Art Proline Series 101 brush, and um, it's a size. I usually use a size 30 or 40. Oh, here I'm going in with the Derwent drawing pencil in Mars Violet, and I've just decided that I'm going to add a little bit of violet here and there you can hardly see it but it does make a difference and just adds a bit of extra warmth and color to those hills found that Posca pens layer so nicely over the top of pencil and pastel and I only have a few colours but I really enjoy using them and um, I tend to use them in pretty much every mixed media landscape I've done. Recently I've started using paint to layer over the top of the pencil when it comes to filling in the trees and it just adds another element of texture and detail and um, I think it really works with these pieces. I discovered the other week if I layer the white luminance pencil over the dark indigo that it gives this amazing slightly blue quality it's like it brings out the indigo in the dark indigo pencil and um, it looks really good it's very effective for adding extra marks and texture to the hills
another thing I've recently discovered is that if I use a Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Brush Pen um, underneath the pencil, it gives another really interesting texture and effect. And sometimes it's very subtle, so in this case I'm using the Light Indigo and um, it won't show up very much underneath the pencil but it does make a difference and it's quite useful to have it there to layer on top of but if I decide to leave some areas without any pencil over the top you have the really interesting marks from the brush pen. Here I'm using one of the luminance pencils to draw lines very firmly over the top of the pen and this will give the impression of a ploughed field. Here I'm very lightly going over the top with a slightly less vibrant orange, I think this one is terracotta and the lines were created with the russet pencil. Depending upon the look I want, I'll sometimes go over the top as I'm doing here with the dark indigo and occasionally a Payne's grey, something darker to add a little bit more depth and shading to the fields so it gives them more of a 3D effect. This is turning into quite a dark and moody landscape here, but it's contrasting nicely with the vibrant trees and the White House. It makes the White House really stand out. And I'm adding a little bit of extra detail to the hills now.
You can see here that the Posca pens just layer over the pencil so well. It's a really nice smooth surface to draw on and um, it's a great way of adding extra detail or if you feel an area is too dark and you want to lighten it up. So for example here I'm using the white Posca over a Payne's Grey and um, you'll see at the end that it does lighten up that lower field. So here's the finished artwork and I hope that you enjoyed the art class. If you have any questions please either leave them as a comment on YouTube or on Ko-fi and I will answer them as best I can. Thank you all for watching.